Welcome back Math 30-1. Today we are going to look at special triangles, exact values, and the unit circle. So to start off, we have to know what is an exact value. An exact value is when we leave our answer in square root or fraction form, or a combination of both, okay? So that means no decimals, okay? So if I punched in sine 30 in my calculator, I'm going to get 0 0.5. We do not want this. This is not an exact value. An exact value would be 1 over 2. If I punched in sine 60 in my calculator, I'm going to get 0 0.866. That, again, is not an exact value. This is not how we want it written. We want it written as root 3 over 2. That would be an exact value. Now, a little key thing here to remember is, if you remember from way back when we did a radicals unit, we do not want a radical in our denominator. So it's never, ra never radical to have a radical in the denominator. We want them to be always in the numerator. So now, there are many of these exact values or special angles, and it's our job to learn them all. And by the end of this class, you will know them all. So there are three ways of learning them, or which I'm going to go over. One is the special triangles. Another one is using a unit circle or chart. And then number three is to memorize the decimals to fraction equivalents for all of them. Okay, so I'm going to first start off here with the special triangles. So I'm going to start off with 45 degree angle. Okay, so 45 right angle triangle. So if this is 45, then that means my other angle must be 45. Now we also know that if two angles are the same, this is going to be an isosceles triangle. So if I say this is side A and this is side B, well side B is going to equal to side A as well. And my hypotenuse is going to have to be the different one because it has to be the longest side. Now, if I want to find the ratio between these, all I'm going to do is we know that a squared plus a squared, because this is that b is actually a, is equal to c squared. Okay? Well, I combine these together, I'm going to end up getting 2a squared is equal to c squared. All right? Now, I square root both sides. So we square root this, square root that. I want to get square root 2a squared is equal to c squared. Simplify this a bit more. I'm going to get square root 2 multiplied by a is equal to c, oops, sorry. That's not c squared anymore, is equal to c. So we rearrange this. I'm going to get a root 2 is equal to c. Okay? Now, Whatever the value of a is, in this case, we're always going to be calling it 1. So then c is going to be root 2. Okay? And this would be 1 as well. Now, let's take a look at when we have a 60 and 30. So I'm going to say this angle here is 60, and this angle here is going to be 30. All right? I'm going to call this distance from here to here a. But in order to solve this, whoops, this is my right angle. In order to solve this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an equilateral triangle. So I'm just going to extend this and flip this on this side. So make a mirror image of this here being 60. So this value here is going to be A as well. Now, altogether, this distance is going to give me 2A. All right? Now, this angle of this 60 triangle is going to be this is now an equilateral, so this whole angle from here to here is going to be 60 degrees. Okay? So now I have an equilateral triangle. So 60, 60, 60. That means all sides must be equal. So my hypotenuse is going to be 2A. Now I'm going to go back to my original triangle here and just look at it over here. So I have my original triangle. I'm going to leave this here at 60, and this is going to be A. This is going to be 2a, and this is going to be my b. And we know this angle here is 30, okay? Well, oh, right angle. Well, now we're going to try and solve for b. So if we use my Pythagorean theorem again, so we have c. c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. In this case, we're going to have c squared minus a squared is equal to b squared. Just rearrange that. And we know c squared is 2a, so I have 2a squared minus a squared is equal to 
b squared, okay? So if I square 2a, that's going to give me 4a squared minus a squared is equal to b squared, okay? So this gives me 3a squared is equal to b squared. Square root both sides, I'm going to get root 3 a squared is equal to b. I'm going to simplify this so I get a root 3 is equal to b. Okay, now I know this part here is whatever my a value is times root, oops sorry, so we have root 3 multiplied by my a value. So we have a ratio here as if this is 1, this is going to be 2, this is going to be root 3. If this here is 1, or sorry, if this one here is 1, this is going to be root 2, and this is going to be 1. And this could help us when creating certain ratios here. So here is my triangle again. So here is my special triangle. We have 1 and 1. This is 45, 45. And we kind of showed that on the page before. So if I look at cos 45, cosine is going to be my, if I look at 45, it's going to be uh, adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's going to give me 1 over root 2, which is the same as, well, I don't want, it's not radical to have a radical on the bottom, so I'm going to be root 2 over 2. Multiply both of those by root 2. Let's look at sine 45. Sine 45 is going to be 1 over root 2, which is the same as root 2 over 2. So I rationalize that. And then we want tan. Well, tan is just going to be opposite over adjacent, which is going to be 1. Okay? Now let's look at this one here, our second triangle. So we have our 30 down there and our 60 there. So I want sine 60. So sine 60 is equivalent to sine is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, which is root 3 over 2. Tan 60 is going to be opposite over adjacent, which is going to be the same as root 3. Cos 60 is going to be, well now, if we look at cosine, it's adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 1 over 2. Now we're going to look at sine, which is opposite over hypotenuse, which is 1 over 2. And cos 30, which is opposite, or sorry, adjacent over hypotenuse, which is going to be root 3 over 2. And then tan 30, which is going to be 1 over root 3, opposite divided by adjacent. So 1 over root 3, which is actually the same as root 3 over 3. Okay, so if we remember, I'm going to combine this here with these triangles here and kind of explain how that works. So sine always refers to my y value, so that's the 1 over 2, so sine 30, 1 over 2. So if I look here, my sine 30 is 1 over 2, like we found on the last page. My cosine of 30 is my x value, which is root 3 over 2, so that's root 3 over 2, okay? Because, and then we look at 45, my sine of root 45, which will be my y value, which we found out right here, is root 2 over 2, okay? My cosine of root 45 is my x value, we found out here, is root 2 over 2. And then we're going to look at the 60. My sine of root 60 is root 3 over 2. So sine of 60 is root 3 over 2. And cos of 60 is 1 half, which is my x value, 1 half. So we're going to plug that into this table here. So if I say sine theta, and theta is 30, so the sine of 30 is going to be my y value. So that's just going to be 1 over 2. 30 is the same thing as pi over 6. Now if I want sine 45, that is root 2 over 2. Looking at this here, sine is my y value. And if I want sine pi over 3, which is the same as 60, that's root 3 over 2. Now cosine is always going to be my x. So this one here, we have root 3 over 2. Here we're going to have root 2 over 2, and then we're going to have 1 over 2. So if I look at tan, we're going to have, tan is always going to be my, of 30, it's my opposite divided by my adjacent, so my y, circoxartix, y divided by x, 
that's going to give me root, uh, sorry, 3 over root 1 over root 3. Okay, which is the same thing as root 3 over 3. And then we're going to have, look at this next one, this is going to be the same thing as 1, because it's opposite over adjacent, so y over x. And then here, y over x is just going to give me root 3. And so these are all of my tan values. Okay? Now, we're going to look at the unit circle. So that's the trig. So this one right here, this is all of our special triangles. And you might, and like they'll tell you to try and memorize this or use the special triangles, draw them out always, and then go based off of this table to help you memorize all of these nine. So that's the special triangle method. Now we're going to get into creating the unit circle. Now this is how I like to think of it. As we found out before, if I look at this here, my largest one is actually root 3 over 2. My smallest one is 1 over 2, and my middle is root 2 over 2. So I'm going to look at these in time in terms of x and y. So if I look at first in my x's, my smallest is going to be actually root 60, which is 1 over 2. Okay? My second is going to be root 2 over 2, which is my 45 degrees. My largest is going to be my 30 degrees for x, which is going to be root 3 over 2. Now, this one here is my smallest y. So at 30 degrees is my smallest y value. Because if I look at that 30 degrees, y doesn't go as high. So this is going to be 1 over 2. 1 over 2 is my smallest. My next one here is going to be root 2 over 2. And then we're going to end up getting root 3 over 2, because 60 is actually my biggest one. And then once we go here, we have, we're all y, so we have 0x, and we're all y, and here we have 0y, and we're all x, so 1 and 0, okay? So, if another quick way of thinking about this is, my x's are going from big to small, okay? So it's 3, 2, 1, and then my y's are going from big or from small to big. So 1, 2, 3. And it's always the square root because square root of 1 over 2 is actually the same thing as saying 1 over 2. So you square root the top and there's three angles we're looking at. So it's 3, 2, 1 and 1, 2, 3. And they always must be opposites of each other here. So these ones are the same at 45. And from there, once we know these reference angles, we can find the other ones. So if I looked in the other quadrants here, well, in this case here, all of my x's are negative, y's are positive. Here, all of my x's and y's are negative. And then here, my y's are negative, x's are positive, and here, everything's positive. So as long as I know this one, which is this section here, I can apply these to all of these based on my reference angles, okay? So if I look at it that way, sine of 0, well, let's try and do this chart here to help us out. Sine of 0, well, that's one sine of 0. That's my y value of 0. We have 0 height. Then we're going to get slowly bigger. 1 over 2, root 2 over 2, and then root 3 over 2, all the way to 90 degrees, which is 1. Cosine, we're starting big, so that's 1. And then we have root 3 over 2. Then we're going to go... Um, root 2 over 2, and then 1 over 2, as sine 60s are smallest, okay? And this is going to give me a total of 0 is there. And then tangent is, well, we just go, once we know these, we just divide one by the other. So tan is, we just go, this divided by that, which is, uh, sir Cox or Tix is y divided by x, that's 0. Here, I have this one here. Uh, y divided by x, so I have 1 over 2 divided by root 3 over 2, and that's going to give me root 3 over 3. This one here is going to give me 1. Then I'm going to get root 3, and my last one here, 1 divided by 0 is undefined. Okay, or not defined. I'll put an N, ND, not defined. Okay, so as we look at that, we always got to remember my x value is always my cosine. My y value is always my sine value. So if remember, 
our famous trig knight, Sir Coxer, ticks. Okay, so sine refers to the y, x refers, or cos refers to the x, and ticks is y divided by x, so tangent. Okay, and the circle completed kind of looks like this here. So if you look, 3, 2, 1, x is always getting smaller than 3, 2, 1, at y gets smaller going this way. And we just, the same here, negative 3, 2, 1, and then 3, 2, 1 down. Negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, and then 3, 2, 1 back down. So we're always looking from our distance, we're always going from this here, our reference angles, okay? So that's the trig circle way. All right, and the last way is to just kind of memorize these. So to memorize, this is always equivalent to this. This here is always equivalent to this. This here is equivalent to that, and this is equivalent to that. So that's the last method, is just to memorize. So now we're going to look at some questions here to work on. Okay. So question number three here says, use a unit circle to find the exact value of all trigonomic ratios for the rotation of 300. So if I want to look at 300, Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is 300 is going to be where? Well, 300 is going to be over here. So my reference angle is going to be, we go 360 minus 300 is going to be 60 is my reference. So my reference angle is 60. Now, if I, I'm going to make here quickly my little thing. So if I want 60, okay. We have 45 and 30. In this case here, my y is going to be the biggest. So that's root 3 over 2. And my x value is the smallest at 60. So that's 1 over 2. Okay? But now, looking at it's in quadrant 4, all of my y values are going to be negative and all my x's are going to be positive. So sine 300, that's referring to my y value. So that's going to be negative root 3 over 2. Cos 300, that's referring to my x value. So that's going to be 1 over 2. Now tan 300, that is going to be my y divided by x, and it's going to be negative, and that's going to give me uh, root 3. Okay? Now I want cosecant, so that's going to be the sine, and that's going to be 1 over, so it's the reciprocal of that. So that's going to be the same as negative, 2 over root 3, which is the same thing as 2 root 3, negative 2 root 3 over 3. Now I want the reciprocal of this, which is just going to be 2, okay, secant is the reciprocal, and cotangent is going to be negative 1 over root 3, which is the same thing as negative root 3 all over 3, once I rationalize it, okay. Now, number 2 says, use the unit circle to find the exact values of the following. So I want 3 quarters pi. I'm only going to do a couple of them here. So 3 quarters pi and it's cos. So cos is referring to my x and we want 3 quarters pi. So I draw that and pi is over here. This is pi over 2. So that's halfway between pi and pi over 2. So that's going to be the 45 but in this quadrant here it's negative. So that's the same as my reference angle here which is going to be 45, which is the same as pi, oops, sorry, which is the same thing as root 2 over 2, okay? So now we're going to do, I'm going to also do this one here. So we want 5 pi over 3. So even if you want and you like it in degrees better, it might be easier to think of this in degrees, so we're going to convert this to degrees. So if I convert that quickly to degrees, that's going to give me 5 uh, over 3 multiplied by 180. So that's going to give me, uh, divided by 3 is 60 times 5 is going to give me 300 degrees. Okay, so that's 300 degrees. So 300 degrees is going to be over here. And my reference angle for this then is going to end up being 60. So with that case, my reference angle is 60, and we're looking at tan, well, 60 is going to be my, and it's cotangent, 
So it's going to be my x divided by my y, because cotangent is the opposite, so it's x divided by y, which is 1 over 2 divided by root 3 over 2, which is going to give me 1 over root 3. And it is negative, so negative 1 over root 3, which is equivalent of negative root 3 all over 3. Okay? So if I look at example 4, I am given two points here, P and Q. And I want to find what is the angle between those two points if we're rotated from P to Q. And we want our answer in degrees and radians. So first thing I'm going to do is try and figure out where P and Q is on the graph. So point P, root 2, negative root 2 over 2. Well, I look at this, my Y is negative, X is positive. It's going to be in this quadrant here. My Q, my X is negative, my Y is positive. We're going to be in this quadrant here. So this is going to be P, this is going to be Q. Now, I look at this part here for P, these are both the same. So my X and Y values are the same. And we know that that's the middle one, root 2, so this is going to actually be 45 degrees, okay? Now I look at Q, I have my X is small and my Y is big. So if my X is small and my Y is big, this is going to give me 60. Now, it wants to find what is the angle between P and Q. So I want the angle between P and Q. So if that's 60, this here is going to be 30, and then that's 45. So I want to know go from this 45 all the way to that 60 there. So I'm going to have to go 90, because we have a 90 degrees here. We're going to go plus 30, which is this angle here, and then plus 45, which is going to give me a total of 120 plus 45, is going to give me 165 degrees. Now, if I want to know that in terms of pi, so that's going to be pi over 2 is my 90 degrees, and then I have to add here uh, pi over 6 plus uh, 6, or sorry, 30 degrees is pi over 6, and then I want to add my 45 degrees, which is going to be the same thing as, well, that's half of that, pi over 4. So now I add all these together, I'm going to end up getting the same thing as 11 pi over 12. Okay? Now let's look at question example number 5. So using a graph, oh sorry, number 5 says using, without using a graphing calculator, determine without using a graphing calculator Determine the exact value of log 2 cos 7 pi over 4. So to start this off, once again, I want to figure out which quadrant this is and solve for cos 7 pi over 4 first. Now for some of us, it might be easier to think of this in degrees. So if I'm going to change 7 pi over 4 from radians to degrees, that's going to be the same thing as we go 180 divided by 4 is 45 times 7 is 315. So I'm going at 315 degrees there. So if we're in 315 degrees, I know it's going to be in this quadrant here. And my angle here is going to be 45, which is root 2, root 2. Okay? So we're looking at cosine. My cosine is still positive. So we're looking at log base 2. And we're going root 2 over 2. Because cos of 7 pi over 4 is equal to root 2 over 2, as we found out over there. Now I'm going to use my log rules here, so it's kind of a review of our log rules. So if we're dividing, that's the same thing as subtracting. So I'm going to have log root 2 minus log 2, 2. Okay, and those are base 2. Now I continue this over here. I'm going to use my exponent rules. This is the same thing as log 2 2 to the 1 over 2 minus log 2. Now this here is the same thing. I could put this 1 over 2 in front. So I have, and log 2 to the 2 is just going to be 1. So it's 1 half times 1, which is going to give me 1. Or sorry, which is going to give me 1 half. And then I have to subtract 2 to the power, 2 to the what is equal to 2. 2 to the power of what is going to be 1. So once again, minus 1 which gives me a total of negative 1 over 2 is going to be my answer. 
So if we take a look at question number seven, it says, determine which of the following points lie on the unit circle. So A, we have this point, one half comma one half. We could do this two ways. I could use my Pythagorean theorem, which is one is equal to x squared plus y squared. But in this case here, there's an easier way of doing it. We could kind of use common sense in this one in a bit. So I look at one half. We know when x is one half from our identities, that means we're, y should be root 3 over 2, because that's a small x, so that means my, y, my x is angle 60, and that's going to be the big y. Now, in this case, we have 1 over 2, so this cannot work, and if I plug that into my trig identities, we would get kind of the same thing. Now, let's take a look at b. b is a bit more challenging here. I am not sure. These probably these don't look like the, our identities that we're supposed to know from our unit circle. So I'm going to look at this in a different way. We're going to have to use our Pythagorean theorem to help us out. So I'm going to go 1 is equal to 16 over 65 squared plus negative 63 over 65 squared. Okay? Well, when I end up doing that, I'm going to punch that into my calculator. I'm going to go 1, or 16, divided by 65, and then I'm going to square that, and I'm going to store that as x. Okay? Then I'm going to go negative 63 divided by 65, and I'm going to square that, and I'm going to add my x to that, and we end up getting 1. So this one here does work. We get 1 is equal to 1. So this point does lie on the unit circle. All right, now let's take a look at question number seven. It says point P, negative one-fifth, and Y lies on the unit circle. So I know this lies on the unit circle. Determine the value of Y. So since it lies on the unit circle, we know one is equal to X squared plus Y squared. In this case, it's uh, negative one over five squared plus Y squared. Now we're going to rearrange this, so I get one minus negative 1 over 5 squared is equal to y squared. And I'm going to solve that there. That's going to give me, this is going to be 1 minus 1 over 25 is equal to y squared, which is equal to 24 all over 25. Okay? And that is y squared. So then y is equal to, we have to square root, square root, um, it's going to be over 5, and that's going to give me 2 root 6. Now, let's take a look at my unit circle, see what's happening. It says it's in quadrant 3, so quadrant 3 is down here. That means my y must also be negative along with my x. Now, B says the point P lies on the terminal arm of an angle of rotation. So what is the exact value of secant theta and cotangent theta? Well, before we start, we know cos theta is equal to uh, negative 1 over 5. Okay, We know sine theta is equal to negative 2 root 6 over 5. Now secant theta is equal to the reciprocal of cos theta, so that's just going to be negative 5. Now cotangent theta is going to be the reciprocal of tan theta. Well, tan is tick, so y over x, so cotangent is going to be x over y. Which in this case is going to be equal to uh, negative 1 over 5 divided by negative 2 root 6 over 5, which is the same thing as negative 1 over 5 times uh, 5 over 2 root root 6, negative. So my negatives cancel off, they're going to end up being positive, 5 cancels off, so I get 1 over 2 root 6. Now I have to make this uh, rationalize it, so I'm going to get root 6 all over 12, and that is going to be cotangent theta is equal to root 6 all over 12. Okay, let's see, theta is equal to that. Now it says, determine the value of theta to the nearest tenth 
if we're looking at this part here between 0 and 2 pi. So if we're looking between 0 and 2 pi, we know it's in radians and already tells us it's in radians and we want it to the nearest tenth. So I'm just going to put in any of these here. So I'm just going to put in cos and to find my reference angle, cos theta is equal to negative 1 over 5. So then cos to theta and this will give me my reference. So I'm going to put in that to go, second cos, uh, 1 divided by 5 and I'm going to end up getting 1.36 so I know 1.36 but we're going to have to look at this in terms of pi 1.36 is my reference angle which is this here is 1.36 so I have to go pi plus 1.36 so I'm going to go plus second pi will give my answer of 4.5 to the nearest tenth And that is going to be my answer.